Hello and welcome. Today we're going to have a quick look at operant conditioning. We divide operant conditioning into four different quadrants. We have reinforcement and punishment, and both of those things can either be done in a positive or negative way. So we can have positive reinforcement or negative reinforcement. We can have positive punishment or negative punishment. So let's look quickly firstly at reinforcement. Now, positive reinforcement. This is something we want to reinforce behaviors that we want more of. Now being positive means that we need to add something to that behavior. So we add a pleasant stimulus to maintain or increase that behavior. Reinforcement also comes in the negative form. So we again, we want more of this behavior, but we do so, we tell the horse that by removing something that the horse doesn't want. But again, we're looking to increase or maintain a behavior. And those are the two reinforcement quadrants. Now we move to the punishment side. And again, this comes in both positive and negative forms, but with punishment, we're looking to decrease a behavior. So whenever we punish a behavior, we want less of that behavior. So positive punishment, we add an unwanted stimulus to decrease the likelihood that that horse is going to perform that behavior again. So for negative punishment, we remove a stimulus that the horse does want. And again, we're looking to make the horse do less of this behavior that we're targeting in the future. So reinforcement, we want more of the behavior and punishment, we want to see less of the behavior. So let's have a look at some examples of what we might use as stimulus in these different situations. So let's have a look at reinforcement. We'll start with positive reinforcement, trying to increase a behavior in the future. And we think quickly when we say positive reinforcement, we think quite quickly to food rewards. And that's a good example. We might use a scratch or a stroke with a horse. We might provide the horse with some companionship or a soft word. Those are all forms of positive reinforcement. We add something that the horse does want and it makes the behavior more likely to occur in the future. A negative reinforcement, we're also wanting to make the behavior more likely to occur in the future. And here we just remove a stimulus that the horse doesn't want. So here we might use leg pressure, for example, we might remove leg pressure when the horse does what we've asked of the horse. We might remove lead rope pressure when the horse walks forward. We might stop using our voice cue when the horse goes into the gate that we've requested. Or we might just move away from the horse, so use our physical proximity to tell the horse, yes, that's what I want you to do. So there we are, negative reinforcement. We're just removing a stimulus that the horse doesn't want. So with punishment, again, it can come in positive form, so positive punishment. And remember, we're trying to make this behavior less likely to happen in the future. So we're gonna add something that the horse doesn't want. So it might be a tap with the whip. It could be a pull on a lead rope. You might shout at your horse or you might smack your horse. All of those things are things that the horse doesn't want. We add them, it makes it positive and we're using punishment. So we're trying to decrease a behavior in the future. So the final quadrant is negative punishment. So negative, it means we must remove something. So here we're trying again to make a behavior less likely to happen in the future. So some examples of what we might remove, we might withdraw attention, we could remove a food reward, we could leave the horse on its own, we could remove food or water from the horse. So let's see if we can work out which quadrant each of these examples falls into. So the first example, we're applying leg pressure to walk forward and removing it when the horse walks forward. So we think about this, we've got to think it's probably a reinforcement. So let's first of all, just say, okay, we're trying to increase that behavior. It sounds like a good behavior. So we're going to be in this column here. And so, so we've said we apply leg pressure to walk forward and remove it. So we're 
using negative reinforcement. So it's going to come down here because we're taking it away. So the horse learns when we remove the pressure, that's what we want. So we removed it as soon as the horse walks forward. Pressure release is always negative reinforcement. The next one is tying the tree, tying the horse to the tree of knowledge. Now, you may not have this in your country. It's a, quite an American and an Australian thing, but it's basically where you tie the horse up alone and it's usually done as a punishment for the horse. So, so we're trying to stop the horse from doing whatever it did wrong again in the future and we're going to tie it up alone to the tree. I'm not suggesting at all that this is a useful form of training. I don't think it is. We're obviously though trying to decrease a behavior. The problem, big problem with this type of thing is the horse probably doesn't know what it did wrong before we tie it to the tree of knowledge. So we're tying the horse and it's alone. So we're actually removing things, aren't we? We're removing its friends. We're removing its company. We're doing all of those things. So it's negative and it's punishment because we're trying to make that behavior, whatever it was, less likely to occur in the future. So next we've got applying a verbal cue to ask for trot and being quiet when the horse trots. So it sounds like a good thing. So I think it's definitely, we're going to try to increase that behavior. You apply a verbal cue, perhaps a clucking sound and the horse trots and you stop making that sound when the horse trots. So we're taking the sound away. So the verbal cue is your pressure. We're releasing that pressure release when the horse trots. So we're trying to increase the behavior. It's definitely reinforcement, but it's going to be negative reinforcement because the horse is learning from when we stop clucking to so negative reinforcement. So removing the horse's food, water, or friends. So obviously the horse has done something wrong. So you're trying to decrease the behavior where removing things so it's going to be negative which is where we remove things it's a negative punishment and that's a bit like our other example of tying the horse to a tree where we removed its food friends and water the next one is scratching the horse on the wither when they do a clean flying change and so here we are we're adding something a clean flying change is something we want so definitely trying to increase that behavior and the scratching on the wither is something the horse wants. So we're adding that. So we're adding it. It's, it's a reinforcement. So it's going to be positive because we're adding the scratch on the wither. Giving the horse a treat when the horse lowers their head. And again, this is, we're adding something. We're adding a treat. The horse lowered its head. That's the behavior we wanted. And we're marking that behavior with the treat. So we're going to increase that behavior in the future. And we're adding something so that again is positive reinforcement. Tapping the horse with the whip on the cannon bone when they're pawing the ground. So if your horse is pawing the ground and give it taps on the cannon bone, now you don't want the horse pawing the ground. So you're trying actually to decrease that behavior in the future. And you're adding the tapping with the whip. So we're going, it's definitely in the punishment area. We're adding something so that makes it positive punishment. So this next one is an interesting one, maintaining a good contact throughout a training session. And this is more sort of directed at something that the rider might be thinking, oh, I maintained a good contact. That was good. For the horse, though, we need to think about this, what horse is learning and think about this from the horse's perspective. And if you maintain a good contact, that means really that you maintain a pressure and it's not released. So we're not using pressure release, negative reinforcement. We're not adding something. So it's not something the horse wants, a good contact. The horse doesn't want that. So it can't be positive reinforcement either. So whether we know it or not, we're actually over here. We are going to decrease the behavior, whether that was our intention or not. It's a type of punishment because there's no release here. Maintaining a good contact throughout the training session, there's no release. So we're adding something. It's It turns into positive punishment. We're adding something that the horse doesn't want. There's no release of pressure. And so that becomes positive punishment, whether or not it's our intention using food treats, but failing to recognize when the correct behavior is offered. 
again, you know, we don't always intend to use the quadrants that we end up using, but I think it's important that we understand how they apply. So you might be trying to train your horse to do something, but perhaps your timing isn't very good and you didn't see the horse do the correct behavior. So in order for using food treats to be to increase a behavior, your timing has to be good. If your timing isn't good, it's going to decrease the behavior because your horse then feels that you are withholding the food treat. So it moves quite quickly from what you thought was positive reinforcement using treats to negative punishment from the horse's perspective because your timing isn't good so you failed to deliver the treat in time therefore you're withholding the treat and the final one here i've got the horse touching an electric fence and again we're not even with the horse but how is what's the horse learning from this and which quadrant is being used when the horse touches an electric fence so we're definitely going to be in the decreased behavior section and it's going to be adding something isn't it it's adding the electric shock that the horse got from the fence so that's positive punishment the horse positively punished by touching the electric fence so just to quickly remind ourselves that positive and negative reinforcement so positive is adding something negative reinforcement is removing something but in both cases using reinforcement we're trying to increase or maintain a behavior as soon as we start correcting the horse we're using punishment and both positive and negative is always about decreasing the frequency of that behavior in the future and i use the word correction there and i think we often think about the difference between correction and punishment being a severity question and i don't think that's right i think that you need to understand that if you're correcting a behavior you're punishing a behavior even the example we used earlier about tapping the horse on the cannon bone with the with the whip you know you might think oh, it's a simple correction but it is as it fits into the quadrants it is positive punishment you don't have to hit the horse to incur punishment you need to be thinking about what your intention is am i trying to get the horse to do less of this in the future and if that is the answer yes then you are punishing the horse or correcting the horse because you want to decrease that behavior it doesn't matter how severe it is it's like the use of your voice you can use your voice as negative reinforcement by clucking to the horse until it does the trots for example i think we use that example clucking to the horse until it trots and then stop clucking that is negative reinforcement pressure release it has to be both those things the pressure and the release make up negative reinforcement but if you keep clucking to horse after the horse is trotting you're then going to decrease that behavior in the future because there is no release so you're adding something and it becomes positive punishment so what this means is we usually use combined reinforcement we usually with horse training we usually try and stay within the reinforcement quadrants and we use a combination of both positive and negative reinforcement so i'll give you a few examples of that in a moment but it's it's not a very clear line often and the more we think about it the clearer it becomes for us and i think then the clearer for the horse so let's just have a little think about combined reinforcement so both positive and negative reinforcement aim to increase a behavior the negative reinforcement it often is what gives the horse the direction and i'm going to have a look at that with the little figure on the right but it has to be both the pressure and the release so the release is not a reward that's we need to add that that's the positive reinforcement part so the negative reinforcement is pressure and release but the negative reinforcement part often gives the horse the direction so positive reinforcement also aiming to increase the behavior and it marks the correct behavior so it makes the behavior really clear for the horse but it must be timely appropriate so we talked earlier about if you're using food rewards for example and you miss the behavior 
you, it's no longer positive reinforcement if it's not correctly timed. It's only positive reinforcement if the treat is given in a timely manner. If it's not, it becomes negative punishment because from the horse's perspective, you are withholding the food. So if we have a look at the figure on the right, I think it's easy to see how combined reinforcement works when we look at training simple things. So we've got a spot on the horse we want to move. It might be its foot, it might be the horse's nose, it might be the horse's ear. It could be anything we want to move on the horse. So we say maybe his foot. We then have a direction we want that to go. So each foot can go in six directions, up, down, left, right, back, forward. So we need to decide before we ask the horse, or we need to know which direction we want that foot to go. So we then need something to motivate the horse to move that foot in that direction. And that's number three, and that's our negative reinforcement. It's the motivator. So how are we going to ask the horse to move that foot in that direction? And finally, the positive reinforcement part of the equation comes in, which is added after pressure release and that's the reward and that really marks the behavior for the horse so it might be the scratch on the wither it might be a stroke or it could be a kind word any of those things it could be a treat any of those things will work to reward the horse and really show the horse that was the right thing that was what i was wanting so let's have a really simple example here let's say you're teaching your horse to load onto a trailer and you want to teach it just to put one foot on and then one foot off and then two feet on and two feet off. So you teach it to get on and off at the same time. So you might have the spot on the horse might be the left front foot. I always like to have one foot because it's much simpler just to teach a horse with one. It makes it much simpler for us to see and for us to use pressure release and reward appropriately. So the direction is going to be forwards and backwards when you're teaching backwards. So we start with forwards. The motivator could be a dressage whip tapping the horse on the hip. That could be your motivator. And your reward might be to give the horse a scratch on the wither when he's done it or a stroke on the neck or something like that. But we need to understand, it's very important, I think, to know the, your spot and your direction before you start. Because otherwise, if you think that you can do something only using positive reinforcement, it's very difficult to actually tell the horse where it is you want it to go. So, you know, you do quite often hear people say, I would only use positive reinforcement, but usually they're using combined reinforcement. And I think it's important that we understand that because it differs we've talked about here as to how timely your reward is. And it also, if you don't think that you're using pressure release, it's possible that your release isn't very timely either. So if I want the horse to learn how to load onto the trailer, for example, but I'm saying I'm only using positive reinforcement, then really I can't put a head collar on the horse. I can't lead the horse towards the trailer. I can't show the horse what I want it to do because all of those things would involve pressure release. I'd have to cluck at the horse. I'd have to move the horse closer to the trailer. All I can really do is wait until the horse decides to step on the trailer and then reward that behavior. So I'm skipping steps one, two, and three. And it makes it very difficult for the horse because it might take a long time. The horse might never decide on its own to get on the trailer. And so that's why we use combined reinforcement because it adds so much clarity to our training. I hope you enjoyed that little talk. If you would like to learn more, please visit us at equitationscience.com.